Welcome to another edition of Kent Hans, the best storyteller in Texas. Make sure that you find us online at HansPodcast.com. Instagram is at Best Storyteller Podcast. We've got a lot to cover today. I know Chancellor Hans is excited to talk about some current events, but let's get started with the uh, saying of the day. Saying of the day, and it ties in some of the things we're going to be talking about. He sticks out like a dirty shirt in a clean laundry. <laughs> and you, you can reverse it and say somebody sticks out like a, a dirty shirt in a clean laundry or a clean shirt in a dirty laundry. But uh, I'm talking about Michael Cohen, and uh, it's uh, the trials that uh, President Trump's going through. And I want to give a quick rundown this morning. There are five trials. Four of them are criminal trials, and one's a civil trial. Uh, the civil trial was a, a trial in, in uh, uh, New York, and it was saying that uh, he uh, falsified his financial statement. And I've never seen a case brought uh, on that basis unless somebody didn't pay back the money. They never check them. And, uh, but the attorney general had promised that her number one goal was to uh, get Donald Trump, and so that's what she was trying to do. Um, they they got a judgment, and then it, Trump's not going to do well in New York uh, or Atlanta, Georgia, or Washington, D.C., because the jury pool is going to be against him. It's, it's hardcore Democrats. But he had to put up an appeal bond of $450 million and uh, 454, I believe the exact number. And so I think that case will probably be reversed. But it it was just amazing that they had the gall to campaign and and uh, and and bring a case under that. Chancellor, of all the cases that President Trump has going on right now, the one that really seems to have grabbed America's attention just because of its salacious nature is the one with Stormy Daniels. It's been labeled a hush money trial, but what it really is is an issue about a contract of non-disclosure. That's a case that, that if you're a prosecutor and your top witness, your number one witness, has to get a leave of absence to leave the prison, uh, that's not a good sign. And your number two witness is a porn star. So, you know, you got you got some problems there. You've got a couple of people that have shown they've made some bad decisions in the past. Yes. And, and you know, with, uh, uh, with Cohen, uh, he's changed his statement on many occasions, which allowed the defense to say, are you lying to us now or were you lying to us then? You know, are you lying to us both times or, you know, what, what's going on here? And uh, I think the thing about Coin, Coin wanted to be the guy, the inside guy that was known as the closest to Trump and that that way more people would hire him and that he could get people to pay him outrageous sums for a retainer. And that was his whole game plan. His game plan wasn't to save Trump embarrassment. Uh, his game plan was to make it look like that if you want to be close to the president, you need to hire me. That was his goal. That's what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if someone has a reputation being close to the president, whether it's Democrat or Republican or whatever, they're going to they're gonna get a lot of lobby business. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a lot of people hiring them uh, just to be able to get their message across. And I think that's where he's coming from. And... Um, it was uh, uh, the DA, Bragg, he, he had campaigned also. I'm going to get Trump. And uh, in their districts, that's that's probably good for them. Uh, Democrats out, outnumber the Republicans like 10 or 12 to 1. I mean, it's not, it's not close in that area. And uh, so, you know, if uh, uh, Bragg was the first person – ever indict someone that had been president of the United States. Mm -hmm. and he's proud of that and goes around talking about it. But the amazing thing to me is that Trump goes through all this, and it doesn't seem to get him off track. He gets focused on what he's trying to do, and he, he stays focused. Mm -hmm. and he did that when he was president. He was focused on tax cuts, and they were charging him collusion with the Russians, which he was found— he didn't do that. Um, 
you know, he stays focused on the tax cut. And uh, that's, that's not easy in politics if people, if national media, of course, is throwing stuff at you every mm-hmm. day. And um, the third case is the Georgia election interference suit. And uh, Trump was indicted along with 18 others, Giuliani and, and many others. Some of them pled guilty to a misdemeanor. And they're trying to get those to plead guilty to a misdemeanor and be a witness for the state. Um, he was involved in, in, they say, in interfering with the outcome of the election in Georgia. And uh, his, his lawyer saying, look, it's free speech. He's entitled to say, I don't think you won. I think I won. And uh, then come, come forward with his proof. That's why he doesn't have good proof. So that, that one... It's on appeal uh, now on the issue of whether uh, Fannie Willis can uh, prosecute. And she took some of the money she got from the feds uh, on uh, criminal cases, and her, her her boyfriend and she went different places and, and uh, stayed at the best places and uh, charged it to the state and uh, federal. And, and so they're, they're saying, can she be unbiased? And... Uh, I don't know. She doesn't come across to me as the brightest light in the in the ceiling, and uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, the The fourth case in uh, uh, is the federal election case, and that's where the federal prosecutor Jack Smith it's in D.C. and uh, they were saying he, it was just like the state case, except it's on a federal basis rather than state basis, and that he was conspiring to overthrow the government. And that uh, uh, you know they they certainly weren't very good at it if that that was a conspiracy, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think that he'll eventually get that one thrown out. Um, also, um, the the fifth case, which is the fourth criminal case, had to be Jack Smith charged him with illegally retaining classified documents. And that's one that you know had big pieces of paper, had classified top, top secret. And the FBI put on there, it was what they put. And they laid it all around the floor and everything. And CNN got in and, and made pictures of it mm-hmm. to make it look bad. That one, jury-wise, uh, Trump may have a, an advantage in that. It's a Florida jury, and uh, he may have one that's not uh, totally against him. Uh, the lawyer for Trump is a guy that lead lawyer is Todd Blanche. Uh, and uh, he uh, went to American University in Washington, D.C., got a B.A., got married when he was 20. His wife is a doctor now. And uh, he worked as a, while well, he was in law school, he worked as a paralegal in the Southern District of New York. Anytime a lawyer tells you that he's worked in the Southern District of New York, it, it means that, that that's big time. That's where all the big time cases are filed in uh, SEC cases in uh, any type of uh, a big business case. That they have to be very alert. And uh, he got out of law school, worked as a prosecutor in the Southern District. Then he went with a big firm in New York City. And so to be Trump's lawyer, he had to, take a leave of absence, so he's on his own now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say if he wins some of these cases, he'll stay by himself and not go back to that big firm and, and share all the money that he could make. But he's a good lawyer. He's You don't see him on TV much. He, he's trying to win the case instead of win the – he lets other people do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Trump uh, has had a – he's been having people come up and stand behind him when uh, – when there's a, a break and uh, he goes out and says certain things, gets as close as he can without getting put in jail. <laughs> He's under a gag order. Mm-hmm. Nobody else got a gag order, but he got a gag order. And uh, so uh, that that uh, remains to be seen. That, you know, that gag order uh, creates some sympathy for him. Exactly. And, and so that sometimes things come back to backfire on you. Uh, I knew Harry Reid. He was in the house with when I was. And he passed that rule change in the Senate that you didn't have to have 60 votes to get somebody approved. And boy, he thought he had cut a fat hog. And, and uh, 
I saw him, and I said, that may come back and bite you. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened, Trump used it to get three judges on the U.S. Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. So it, it did come back. So if you're trying to put a ploy together that'll snarl the opposition into a bad position, remember, uh, it may come back around. You know, the the sad thing about this, uh, I think we're in a position this is going to go on for a long time. I, I think that Republicans won't be able to resist if they get back in control without, indict, without indicting some people. And uh, it's... Uh, you're indicting people, it's hard to work with them, get mm-hmm. them to compromise with you on some issue. You know, they'll say things like, uh, you're trying to send me to prison and you want me to work with you? You know, what are you going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, don't take it personal, <laughs> you know. Going back to the all the cases that President, former President Trump is involved with, and this is a calculated effort to keep him off of the campaign trail. By the Democrats, no, no question. They uh, they want to keep him off the campaign campaign trail, and the judge wanted to limit what he could say, mm-hmm. and uh, so they want to keep him off the trail and keep him quiet. But you know, I'd I'd hate to have my assignment to be keeping Donald Trump from saying anything. Uh, that'd be a difficult <laughs> task. He's going to say more than you'd want him to say, even being on his side, and uh, it it. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it. instead of outraising money, I, I think the Democrats, when they put this together, remember, all these things are alleging happened in uh, 2020 or early 2021. And we're in 24 before they got, you know, if, it, if it's really a bad crime or something, you want to get on it and get on it early and get it out there and get it tried. But uh, it keeps him tied up, uh, is their theory. It keeps him from raising money. And it makes him spend a lot of the money that he raises, that he does raise. It may, makes him spend that uh, on lawyers rather than on the campaign. And there's, and if you're a believer in polls, it seems to be helping it, President it, Trump. You know, he's ahead. Right. And I don't know if he's ahead because Biden's Biden or because they miss Trump. Um, I had a guy tell me at the airport the other day, that he said nobody's going to vote for Biden. There's going to be those voting for Trump and those voting against Trump. But <laughs> Biden, Biden's not a factor. Um, you know, you don't know if Biden, there's always that rumor out there that he's going to drop out of the race. I don't see that happening. Could, but, uh, you know, he loves being president, and he doesn't get hard questions. The press never does. They don't go after him. Yeah. And uh, so he has a pretty easy time of it. This whole, uh, over the years when you and I have been busy and doing this podcast, one thing that I've really learned is how important the proximity to power is, the closeness to power, and how much weight that carries both politically but also in business. Well, it does. And, and you know, I saw it uh, even in my congressional office. The, the people in the staff want to be the closest to the member of Congress, you know, gives them more power, more authority. But it is really alive and well in the White House, regardless who's president. They, they, they'll start rumors with the press about somebody they don't like that's on the White House hoping to get them fired. And, uh, and they know that. Mm-hmm. And some uh, tougher than others, uh, Reagan had to face it a little, and, and he took it kind of head on and, got on to some people and uh you know, in controlling the rumors yeah and, and, and controlling them fighting each other mm-hmm. you know i mean it's it's not good when you staff you know staff person a is fighting staff person b that does not help the candidate no and reagan always reminded them that do you see you mentioned the debates there will be two of them they seem to have agreed thus far on the terms of the debate. Do you feel as if presidential debates in the year 2024 are the same, better, or worse than they were 50, 60 years ago? I don't think they're as good in that most people, there's so much news coverage of everything this day and time. Most people have their mind made up. Mm -hmm. These trials, you you can't shock people anymore. You know, they've heard everything. Mm -hmm. And so they... The trials, I don't think, is going to change any votes to speak of. You know, people say, well, I knew he did that. 
mm-hmm. you know, doesn't bother me. And they'll just go on. Um, that uh, uh, on Biden, they'll say, well, you know, he he doesn't like feeble to me, you know, uh, and uh, their their mind is made up. There's there's very few people out there undecided, right, uh, in this day and time. But the, if you go back to the Nixon Kennedy debate, at first debate they had Nixon. Had not had a chance to shave late that afternoon, and he had a little growth of a beard. And he and his little tire that had him traveling. And they had taken Kennedy off the road for three days before then, had him sleeping late and resting up, and had, had him well prepared. And it, Nixon was ahead until that debate, and then the polls switched. And we really realized the power of television. With that power debate. of television. Start, Phil Graham tells one of the best stories about the power of television. He was running against a weatherman in runoff, and uh, he was in Waxahachie campaigning, and he told this lady he'd like to vote and said, who are you running against? And he gave the guy's name. And she said, well, I can't. I know him so well and everything. He said, how do you know him? She said, he gives the weather every night. In the living room, you know, he's on TV there in the living room. You tell me what the weather going to be. Mm-hmm. You know, Phil was like, whoa, <laughs> I better buy some more TV time. Right. Well, you realize he's not going to be forecasting the weather if he's elected, right? Yeah. That's what you want to tell her. <laughs> it's interesting for sure. Uh, you've said it many times. Uh, just name ID. Name ID. It's everything. You know, some people say, well, we want a third choice other than Biden and Trump or something like that. That's not going to happen, except Joe Kennedy is is the third choice right now. Bobby Kennedy. Robert. Uh, Robert, Robert, Kennedy. Robert. Yeah. Robert Jr. Yeah. He's just and, in Austin, by the way. And uh, he uh, is third, and, and uh, you know, he'll get some votes. But the question is, will he get more votes away from Biden or Trump? And there's a lot of argument and disagreement on that in uh, in the last several months. Six months ago, they were saying he'd get more from Biden. And then they got to the point saying he'd get more from Trump. The fact that there's even a conversation about RFK is interesting because the mainstream media gives him zero time. None. Z- zero time. And I tell you, the only thing that um, opinion I have about Robert Kennedy Jr. is that I wish Biden would give him Secret Service protection. Mm-hmm. He's had an uncle and a, you know, uh, dad, that uh, were both assassinated, and uh, and they and, and Biden just refused to provide him. I, I don't care who it is, if if they're a major candidate, they need Secret Service protection. Yeah, he certainly didn't seem to weigh the downside of that. I mean, what what does it hurt to provide him protection versus what happens if something does happen? No, oh, it'd be devastating. It certainly would. Chancellor, did you happen to see that story where they asked people if they'd rather be five times richer, five times smarter, or five times more attractive? I did, and I looked at it and I thought about it. if if you had a net worth of a hundred dollars, you know, uh, going up to five hundred is not going to help you a lot. No, if you had a net worth of you know ten million, you know, <laughs> going up to fifty million, that, that that's that's big, that's mm-hmm. big. Uh, I would take the richer because with the richer, you can become more attractive. You know, uh, they can have a facelift or a tummy tuck or a mm-hmm. butt lift or whatever whatever they want to do. Um, and uh, and smarter, five times smarter, if you had an IQ of 110, does that mean that you're going to have an IQ of 550? Uh, it, it'd be hard to probably get around mm-hmm. and do much. But the... Uh, the results uh, were pretty interesting and in that I thought money would be the determining factor, the richer, uh, but uh, uh, people that are not making much money five times are not going to help them. They need 500 times maybe. Mm-hmm. And so what were the results uh, the exact? Uh, they were in the, the top one was people said they would be more attractive, I believe. and That's how vain society's got but it kind of goes hand in hand because if you're five times more attractive, you can get a whole lot richer too. You yeah. know that helps. It's like a short a, a short man that's very wealthy. He's a whole lot taller when he stands on his wallet. 
right? right. <laughs> Uh, I don't have all those results of there, mm. but it was surprising. The rich, the like you said, the the five times richer was the third choice yeah. on that list. Kind of surprised me. Um, Sandy, we had uh, the, the, the stupid criminals. I read this in uh, online, and I thought that'll be in that list, and it was a guy. They were closing a bar, and a guy pulled a gun on the bartender and said, "I'm going to shoot you if you close the bar." <laughs> Now, do you think he might have been drunk? Mm-hmm. He was what we used to call, uh, lawyers would call, I had a client that was drunk, drunk. <laughs> you know, he was drunk, uh, saying, I'm going to shoot you if you close the bar. He, he wanted a few more drinks. You know? He probably ought to stop drinking. If you're doing yeah. something like that, and that's that's probably a good indicator. Maybe get some help, stop drinking. Well, he, he could probably, when he goes to prison, he get an AA program in prison. <laughs> <laughs> hope he'll get to one before he goes to prison. Yeah. Or doesn't yeah. go to, if he doesn't go to prison, hopefully he'll get to an AA meeting. I also saw a deal that people are more likely to lose weight if they're given money. You know, huh. somebody tells somebody they need to lose some weight and said, I'll give you $500 if you lose six pounds within the next week or two or whatever it's a great motivator it, uh, great motivator and helps them get it done also there was a in the same study uh there was a people do not think you have a romantic relationship 68 percent of the public you do not have a real romantic lake relationship unless you can talk about in uh, bathroom behavior and uh so I, you know i don't know i saw that and kind of you know, that's, you know, why would you want to talk about bathroom behavior? You know, right, that's one of those things I don't want to know about. You yeah. know, it's it's kind of don't ask if you don't really want to know. There was a lady in in um, Delaware, and she applied to get these special tags. You know that you see on people buy special tags, vanity like vanity vanity plates, plates. Yeah. yeah. And um, hers was F cancer. And and they wouldn't give it to her, and she sued, and went through the court, went to Supreme Court of of Delaware, and she won. And she's telling, them, well, I mean, fight cancer, mm-hmm. health cancer. Well, they think people are gonna think it's something else. Yeah, you know, they were trying to help her out and not let her spend her money on that. It's kind of similar. So there was a oh boy, a, a judge in Indiana recently ruled that the taco is a sandwich. And this was for some permitting that was needed to be done, but he made a ruling, yes, a taco is a sandwich. I'd argue against that. Yeah, I would, too. I, I saw that, and I thought, they're trying to get them into business. They're trying to help them out and avoid, mm-hmm. avoid some regulations. It's, it's like there, the sample I was looking at had a deal about beauty pageants. And women have a tendency, most women think they're outdated, but men don't. <laughs> so I, I got a kind of a funny at that but one other thing it took up about stress on a date and it uh and i i find this hard to believe 36 percent of the women interviewed said that they had passed out on a date from stress wow 36 percent and 18 percent said they had puked on a date <laughs> It won't build the guy's confidence up. But I had a friend, he had a date, and she got drunk uh, on him in, in Lubbock. And he went out, and he helped her get in the car and everything. And by the time he goes around to get in the driver's side, she had puked all over the front <laughs> seat and every place and everything. And then he, he was trying to clean it up, and he stuck his key in to get the motor going. It was cold, and it wouldn't work. He is in the wrong car. <laughs> so he just got her out of there and found his car and left. And he said he always felt bad about it, but not bad enough to try to find the real owner. Uh, so it, it, back in the 70s, if you were in Lubbock, Texas, and you came out and somebody had puked in your car, it was my friend's day. <laughs> oh, that's good. But uh, the Trump trials, you know, remember, they're there to be watched. He had the civil trials behind behind him. Uh, you probably get that reverse. The hush money uh, is still going, and it'll be hard for him to win, but he might win. Mm-hmm. Might win at that e- even though the jury panels are going to be made up of primarily uh, liberal Democrats. 
Georgia election still pending, and the federal election case is still pending. Supreme Court, they had some doubts about giving complete immunity. Uh, and then the uh, Florida case and the classified documents, that, that is still pending. And this case will be over in some of those other cases that come up. Mm-hmm. And so they, they can keep him tied up then. But just as you said, the sympathy vote, you know, the American public, they don't like to see someone not get a fair shake. And so it, it may, may be to his benefit. You know, something we didn't talk about, we talked about before yesterday, but we haven't talked about here, is the recording of your client. Yeah, that's, hey, that, that, that's, that, that's the worst thing, that you should never record your client. A, a lawyer that does that, he had first of all need to ask the client, mm-hmm. "Do you care if I record you?" But you know, so that I can go back and refer to this uh, later. But uh, for him to record his client and uh, and be going after him and trying to get him convicted of something is just ridiculous. I, I think that one's you could probably lose your license on. It's an ethics thing. Yeah, it's an ethics thing. How many people are going to go see a lawyer? And somebody's going, by the way, he's going to record you. He's going to what? <laughs> you know, and that's, I mean, that's not good for the profession. The saying of the day was perfect today in comparison to uh, Michael Cohen. Sticks out like a dirty shirt in the clean laundry. <laughs> and uh, so he's he's had a, a rough week, but uh, I think he probably knew it was going to be a rough week. But he was trying, he's trying to be the man. He wanted everybody in Washington and New York to say, He's the man. If you need something done, hire him. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was, and it kind of backfired on him. We appreciate you listening. Make sure you scroll through our past episodes. There's a lot of great content there. Check out our website, which is handspodcast.com. And uh, give us a follow on Instagram at Best Storyteller Podcast. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you.